Boston University's 148th commencement is about to begin. Please rise as you are able. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. I'm Kenneth Feld, Chairman of Boston University's Board of Trustees. On behalf of all the trustees and University Advisory Board, it's my honor to declare the 148th commencement of Boston University is now in order. I ask that you please remain standing for the national anthem to be led by Ms. Jillian Agona, who is graduating with her bachelor's degree in music from the College of Fine Arts. And following the anthem, remain standing for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by the Reverend Dr. Robert Allen Hill, Dean of Marsh Chapel. Thereafter, President Robert Brown will preside over the ceremonies. A Psalm of David. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest when I sit down and when I rise up. Thou discernest my thoughts from afar. Thou searchest out my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou dost beset me behind and before, and layest thine hand upon me. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in Sheol, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and travel to the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me, thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only the darkness cover me and the light about me be as night, even the darkness is not dark to thee. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light with thee, and we pray. O thou light in whom we see light, in tuo lumen videbimus lumus, thou by whose light we see light, grant us thy peace, grant us thy peace, grant us thy peace. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to Boston University's commencement exercises. It is a pleasure to welcome such a large number of bachelor's degree candidates who are here in person today on Nickerson Field and those graduates and guests who are joining us via the internet. First, I want to offer my heartfelt congratulations to you for earning your Boston University degree and being here this afternoon to savor the accomplishment. Fifteen months ago, no one could have imagined the path you would follow to arrive at today's ceremony. You have navigated through the worst pandemic in modern history, 
caused by a virus that has afflicted over 160 million people and caused more than 3.3 million deaths. You have become masters of Zoom and accepted mask wearing as a daily routine. On our campuses, we have successfully prevented disease transmission through comprehensive testing, contact tracing, and adherence to health protocols. To date, we've gone through over a million swabs. We have the cleanest noses in town. Without your informed and conscientious cooperation, we could not have achieved this shared success. Modern science has never been so visible or important to the human race. In just over a year, we have studied a disease at a level that was unimaginable just decades ago and used this understanding to develop vaccines in record time. Hopefully, our response to deadly infectious diseases will be forever improved. Through all the disruption, anxiety, and sadness caused by COVID-19, you have demonstrated strength, adaptiveness, perseverance, and humanity. These attributes, tested in adversity, will serve you well as you go forward in your lives. Again, my congratulations on your accomplishments at Boston University. It is now my pleasure to present Ms. Archelle Telemach, a senior who received her bachelor's degree from the College of Communication. She will speak on behalf of the class of 2021. If you are able, please join me in a centering breath. You ready? As BU students, we love doing things the right way, even breathing. And when we breathe this right way, we inhale air into our stomachs and the walls of our body expand forward. We breathe forward. Distinguished faculty, members of the administration, board of trustees, friends, family, and my fellow members of the BU class of 2021. It is with great honor that I stand here before you to celebrate our latest accomplishment, a feat that rivals that of breathing here today our commencement. And today, as you know, no matter where you are physically in the world, is a family affair for all to celebrate. And among the members of our Boston University family we celebrate today is the Reverend Dr. Howard Washington Thurman whose common ground philosophy we've explored since arriving at BU. And today, I share yet another meditation from the Reverend. Keep the dream of the heart alive, for as long as a person has a dream in their heart, they cannot lose the significance of living. My dream when I was 18 years old was to leave my beloved hometown of Kennesaw, Georgia and venture here to Boston to build a new home. So in September 2017, with an extensive checklist in hand, my parents wished me goodbye, saying to me in Haitian Creole, Kimbela, or hang in there. And I went on to Boston University. And after our matriculation, BU Today wrote an article noting that our class, 
The BU class of 2021 was the university's most socioeconomically and racially diverse class to date. And when my posse mate, WTBU co-DJ, fellow Howard Thurman Center ambassador and forever sister friend, Erin Victoria Edwards and I saw that the publication had used an image of us smiling and waving for the story, we laughed. A bit of a short-lived inside joke, we would call each other by our respective adverb. Hey, racially, one would say, what's going on socioeconomically? The other would respond. But what we did not realize was the gravity of with whom we were in company. The world's most brilliant minds who from the moment step foot onto this campus have worked to mold this university into a home fit for a class such as ours. We became a campus of poets, playwrights, fashion podcasters, magazine editors, community playmakers. We became a campus of activists, calling, marching, working, toward justice, becoming who we had always dreamed of. We have kept alive the dream as we have not lost the significance of living. But as much as we are a generation of dreamers, we are a body of people who know grief all too well, often mobilized by something as simple as a hashtag. Hashtag me too. Hashtag stop Asian hate. Hashtag free Palestine. Hashtag black lives matter. Hashtag justice for George Floyd. Justice for Sandra Bland. Justice for Atatiana Jefferson. Justice for Oluwatoyin Saluol. Justice for Breonna Taylor, hashtag say her name. I would be remiss if I did not take, if not just a moment of my time to honor those who do not breathe with us today. Those who the institutions in place and justice systems in place to protect have failed and who now we have learned to mourn. Those whose lives were claimed by a global pandemic that nature created but a lack of nurture perpetuates. Those who we love and hold so dearly to our hearts that we live for them through our breath. For those who do not breathe with us here today, we honor you and remember you by keeping the dream alive. Class of 2021, my class, Though our time together has almost met its end, we stand in awe at the home we've been able to build together and revel in awe at the symphonies of sounds of what I call our BU mixtape. The hustle and bustle of a GSU lunch rush, the intense debates about dating life in the HTC, Shouting Cardi B's Bodak Yellow with the girls before the night out. Swag surfing with the boys at the night out. And some of us pretending to know the lyrics to Meek Mill's Dreams and Nightmares every single time. 
Class of 2021, when we remember the last four years, the hard parts, the roadblocks, the obstacles that almost stopped our journey short will be so easy to remember. But I challenge us to remember the good, the joyous, the parts that like breathing and dreaming and smiling and waving are so automatic and critical to who we are. When I was 18, my dream was to come here and build a home. And today, I can proudly say that that dream has been actualized. And I have two more things I want us to do. First, smile for a picture. Um, I brought my camera. Get this side. I love y'all too. <laughs> and lastly, join me in one last breath together as a class. As we remember to keep the dream alive. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Telemar. I would now like to present Ms. Audrey Tran, a senior from the College of Arts and Sciences, and Ms. Beatriz Viana Martin da Costa, a senior from the College of Communication. Thank you, President Brown. I am so excited and grateful to celebrate, in what is certainly a very unique way, the impact the class of 2021 has had on BU. We rose to the occasion and created new traditions that brought us closer together and helped us find hope during a year that was unlike any other. Four years ago, I felt anxious and overwhelmed at matriculation, unsure of how I would fit in at BU. But soon after, I discovered communities across campus that transformed BU into my second home. I joined the Classcape campaign for that very reason. As an international student from Brazil, the people and communities like these embraced me and were central to my BU experience. The 2021 class gift is the collective support made by individual donors to causes and programs across campus that positively contributed to our time as students. Every single one of you who joined this effort is represented by how you directed your support. To schools and colleges, scholarships, initiatives like the new Center for Anti-Racist Research, and the student groups that ignited passions and facilitated lasting friendships. I am proud to say that approximately 1,500 members of our class have joined the campaign. Thank you to everyone who supported the class gift campaign this year. Committee board members, the development alumni relations staff, our friends and family, and of course, every member of the class of 2021 who made their gift. Our impact on BU is only just beginning. As alumni, it is up to us to cultivate this community beyond Commonwealth Avenue. As the next chapter of our lives begins, we hope you continue to be part of this worldwide network of distinguished change makers and innovators. President Brown, on behalf of Boston University's newest alumni, it's my pleasure to announce the 2021 class gift for the amount of $40,000. Thank you, Ms. Tron and Ms. DaCosta, and thank you, the class of 2021. The class gift is a tangible expression of your commitment to Boston University. This commitment began when you first enrolled as students and is confirmed today as you move into the ranks of alumni. In the life of a university, faculty come and go, presidents come and go, but alumni are its constant, the never unending link of its past, present, and future. I am now pleased to present J.R. Hippo, president of the Boston University Alumni Council, who will speak to you on behalf of the Alumni Association.
Mr. Feld, President Brown, distinguished guests, and class of 2021, you made it. And I have to tell you, what a wonderful and tough act to follow, our show. Those were beautiful comments. Delivered just, wow, wow. And this is such a wonderful sight to see. Um, I hope you'll take a moment and think about your first days at BU. And think about, would, would you have ever imagined that you'd experience so much change from that day until this glorious graduation day? Well, you can imagine it now because you made it and you lived it and you're growing from it, as Dr. Brown mentioned earlier. There's a poem entitled, The Fascination of What's Difficult by W.B. Yeats, which reminds me of your journey. And the title on its face value seems, oh, this is interesting. This is gonna really make me inspired about facing difficulties and adversity. But what really happens is Yeats devotes most of the poem to complaining about his stresses, anxieties, and frustrations in his life. Something that maybe you all have felt a little bit of lately, that maybe the world has felt a little bit of lately. But he closed the poem on a positive note by saying that he has great hope and optimism for his tomorrow. Great hope and optimism for his future. Well, now that you are receiving a degree from Boston University, you have good reason to have great hope and, and, and optimism for the future. You will forever be connected to a world-class university whose reputation and achievements grow measurably year after year. And I like to believe that the reputation in large part is enhanced by the, the 348,000 alumni who are in 185 countries around the world. There, there's countless benefits of being a member of the, of the BU Alumni Association. But there's three that we hear about time and time again from alums. First is the incredible network of alums who are supportive from early careers, through careers, and throughout lives. The second one, and maybe some of you have experienced this, is, is the opportunity to coach and mentor students, and also, again, to help, to help students in that er early career search. And the third is really the pride in the university's continued commitment and efforts to get better year after year. Success for a university, however, is an unending quest. So now we turn to you. We need you to be involved to make BU an even better place in the future. We need you to be involved to help students who are gonna follow you and to support the faculty and staff and now soon to be fellow alumni. And I promise you that when you are involved, not if you are involved, when you are involved, you will get far more back in return than you ever gave to this wonderful place. So congratulations, and on, on behalf of the Boston University Alumni Association, I welcome you to the association. You are following in big footsteps, but I have confidence that you'll make even greater positive contributions to this world than those who came before you, and we are counting on it. Thank you, Mr. Hipple. Teaching is an art. It is also one of the most important functions of a university as it helps to mold the next generation of informed citizens and creative thinkers, many of whom are here today. The late Dr. Arthur G.B. Metcalf, an alumnus, faculty member, and trustee founded and endowed the Metcalf Cup and Prize for Excellence in Teaching at Boston University to recognize great practitioners of this art. 
Candidates for the award are nominated by members of the Boston University community, and a committee of faculty and students then submits its recommendations to the university provost and to me. It is indeed difficult to select the winner of the Medcalf Cup and Prize because all of the candidates are outstanding. Two finalists in the competition will receive the Medcalf Award for Excellence in Teaching. Will Dean of Arts and Sciences Stan Skarloff bring, please present the winner of the 2021 Medcalf Award for Excellence in Teaching? President Brown, I have the honor to present David Sullivan, winner of the 2021 Metcalf Award. David Sullivan believes this is an exciting time to teach computer science. For thousands of Boston University students, his enthusiasm also makes it an exciting time to learn. With abundant enthusiasm, Dr. Sullivan has helped transform computer science education at the College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Sullivan is quick to adopt new technological platforms and generously helps other faculty members adapt them to their own courses. He also pioneered the use of undergraduate course assistance to provide students with increased one-on-one -on -one assistance in small group discussions, a program he now oversees department-wide. His embrace of the new is fully on display in Introduction of Computer Science, the gateway course to the major where he employs not just new technology, but new pedagogical concepts. Described by a colleague as radically designed, the course supplements the traditional focus on programming in favor of creative units that explore the diversity of subjects that constitute modern computer science. Students are effusive in their praise. They speak of a funny and engaging instructor who really cares about students and makes a lecture hall of 200 students feel like a personalized 10-person classroom. Dave has been an innovative leader in the educational mission of the department and the university, says his nominator, and he has had an enormous impact on the lives of students. We agree. Boston University proudly presents David G. Sullivan the Medcalf Award for Excellence in Teaching. In addition to Dr. Sullivan, during this morning ceremony, Dr. Fadi Coleman of the School of Medicine was presented with the Medcalf Award. My congratulations to both of them. Well, Dean of Arts and Sciences, Stan Skarloff present the winner of the 2021 Metcalf Cup and Prize for Excellence in Teaching. President Brown, I have the honor to present Steve Ramirez, winner of the 2021 Metcalf Cup and Prize. Dr. Steve Ramirez's passion for exploring and teaching the mechanisms of memory makes him, appropriately enough, unforgettable. A Boston University alumnus, he is currently an assistant professor in the psychological and brain sciences and the biomedical engineering departments, where he excels as a scientist, mentor, and teacher. Described as masterful in the organization and structuring of his classes, Dr. Ramirez shines brightest communicating the nuances of neuroscience. He ch challenges students to confront fundamental questions through a journey of deconstruction, reconstruction, and exploration. They break down phenomena to tractable, measurable parts, reassemble those parts to propose means by which an unknown can yield an experiment and finish with team-based projects in which they propose original concepts and experiments. Students leave with a deep understanding of the science of memory. 
In response, students lavish praise upon him for his passion, understanding, endless optimism, and magic that makes everything super interesting. But two qualities in particular seem to arise again and again, approachable and encouraging. Steve Ramirez is deeply knowledgeable and deeply devoted to conveying knowledge with clarity and power. Boston University is honored to present him with the highest teaching award, the Metcalf Cup and Prize for Excellence in Teaching. Will the University Marshal please escort our honored guest to the podium? If there ever was a year in which we may look to familiar and ancient sources for wisdom, this is it. We are counseled in Romans 5 to glory in our tribulations because from tribulations we learn patience, from patience experience, and from experience hope. As we conclude the academic year and look ahead, we have ample reason to celebrate and be hopeful. The Boston University community persevered through the COVID-19 pandemic, the worst in a century. We succeeded in preventing major outbreaks of the disease. Step by step, we are restoring campus operations and in-person teaching and learning. This coming fall, we anticipate that we will open our campus so that once again, it is the completely vibrant, bustling academic community that we all love. The foundation of this success in navigating through tribulation is a team called Healthway. This is a team that administered our comprehensive testing program, contact tracing, as well as our quarantine and isolation protocols. I know some of you met those protocols. Team members have worked for over a year under intense pressure. Their patience has been tested and they could and they have developed a massive fund of experience. The Healthway team has made it possible for us to be hopeful that we would and could turn the corner. As we look forward in hope, we must look back in gratitude. The Healthway leader is Dr. Judy Platt, Director of Student Health Services. Today we offer our thanks. Thank you. Today we offer our thanks to Dr. Platt because of her wise and informed leadership, and we thank her as the representative of the Healthway team of over 200 patient and splendidly conscientious individuals. We are forever in their debt. Thank you. <laughs> Honorary degrees are highest higher education's most prestigious recognition. They are often given to individuals who are leading scholars, scientists, authors, musicians, entrepreneurs, social scientists, and government leaders. This year, Boston University is proud to honor three such distinguished people. During this morning ceremony, Dr. Nubar Afayan, co-founder and chairman of Moderna, and Ms. Catherine D'Amato, President and CEO of the Greater Boston Food Bank were awarded honorary degrees. We are delighted that Ms. D'Amato is able to join us this afternoon as well. Please, round of applause. <laughs> Growing up, you dreamed of becoming a singer and songwriter but music was not your only inspiration. 
You were eight years old when you helped out at your father's restaurant where no hungry person was ever turned away from the back door. From that humble lesson grew a lifelong commitment to feed those in need. You started with a tiny food cupboard in San Francisco. Soon you organized several local cupboards into a larger, more efficient food pantry program. And later you created the San Francisco Food Bank to supply it. Then as executive director of the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts, you created the first food bank farm in the United States. In 1995, you assumed leadership of the Greater Boston Food Bank, which at the time distributed 7.5 million meals per year. Today, the food bank serves 82 million healthy meals each year to 190 cities and towns in Massachusetts. Your beginning was small, your ideas big, your impact enormous. It may have not been your childhood dream, but your contribution as a food banker plays as sweet and uplifting as any song. Catherine DeModel, for the millions of hungry people fed, for the lives changed and no doubt even saved, Boston University proudly has granted you the degree Doctor of Human Letters, Honoris Causa. Please thank you. Will Trustee Kenneth Feld escort our honored guest to the podium? Mr. President. Trustee Feld. I am proud to present Ayanna Presley for Boston University's Honorary degree. elected class president in seventh grade and again in eighth and in ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. In high school you added student government president, debated competitively, and you were named most likely to be the mayor of Chicago. Political success seemed your destiny. But destiny was, in reality, passion, hard work, and resilience. The child of a single mother and a father who was in and out of the criminal justice system, you nevertheless excelled. In 1992, you enrolled here at Boston University, but after two years, you withdrew to help support your mother. Daunted and inspired by her work as a tenants' rights organizer, you became a community activist serving as a senior aide to Congressman Joseph P. Kennedy II, and working for 13 years in various roles with Senator John Kerry. You broke barriers, becoming the first woman of color elected to the Boston City Council. And the first woman of color elected to the United States Congress by Massachusetts. Your accomplishments are helping to bring about a day when girls of all colors dream not of being the first, but being the next. Today, almost 30 years after your studies were interrupted, you returned to our campus to receive a degree earned through a lifetime of service and leadership. 
Ayanna Presley, Boston University proudly confers upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. to deliver Boston University's 148th commencement address. Thank you so much, President Brown and Chairman Feld, for this distinctive honor. I wish to dedicate this honorary degree to my ancestors, I know I am their wildest dreams. To my mother, may she rest in peace and power. She prayed so many prayers into me, poured so much into me. And to my father, who despite his entanglement with the criminal legal system, did attain two advanced degrees and went on to become a professor of journalism and a published author. And I also dedicate this degree to my husband, Conan Harris, and our daughter, Cora, who are my biggest cheerleaders and who sacrifice and serve right alongside me each and every day. It has been nearly 30 years from the moment I first set foot on this campus until this moment today. So I think it would be fair to say that I've taken an unconventional route to this degree. To all of the graduates today, no matter what path you have followed to get here, good afternoon and congratulations. Congratulations as well. Well, you can hand clap yourselves. <laughs> Congratulations as well to my fellow honorary degree recipients, Nubar Afayen and Catherine D'Amato, who have made such important contributions to our community, both locally and globally. And to your student speaker, Arshel Thelamak. From Howard Thurman to Meek Mill to Brianna Taylor and Atiana Jefferson, may they rest in power. Arshel, you delivered a word. And I am so proud of you. Hashtag she ready. And I am so grateful for the opportunity to join with all of you today. And after the events of the past year, even more thankful that we can be here together in community, in celebration. And when I say all of you, indulge me while I enumerate that I am addressing not only the graduates, the esteemed faculty, the board of trustees, but the administrators, the adjunct professors, the teaching assistants, the facilities staff, the food service workers. The ACL, the ASL interpreters. And of course, the caregivers, the family members and friends, thank all of you for the support that you have provided and the sacrifices that you have made to bring us to this day. Now the story of what brings me here to this stage, to this moment, begins as so many parts of my life do, with my mother, Sandy Presley the woman who gave me my roots and my wings. Now, from the day that I was born, my mother made sure I knew that it was a beautiful thing to be black and something that I should be proud of, but she wanted her baby girl to know that she was being born into a struggle. And she had an expectation that I would play a role in that struggle, a beautiful struggle, the fight for justice and collective liberation. 
And in ways big and small, my mother made sure I had the opportunity to step into myself, to stand in my own power fully. Instead of traditional bedtime stories, she read me the speeches of Barbara Jordan and Shirley Chisholm. She worked multiple jobs so that I could attend one of the best schools in Chicago, and she constantly reminded me that I am enough. After high school, she encouraged me to come here to Boston and to seek the opportunity afforded by this august university. When I arrived on campus, in fact, at Rich Hall, it was as the embodiment. It was as the embodiment of all the hopes, dreams, and yes, fears that my mother had for me. I knew not a soul here, but I threw myself into the university community, and like so many of you here today, I used work study and a number of temporary jobs to make ends meet. And it was as a student here that I gained an internship in the office of Congressman Joseph P. Kennedy II. Now, my mother was a, a proud Democrat, a politically astute super voter, and I was familiar with the work of Congressman Kennedy because my mother had told me what he was doing to combat the practice of redlining in the city of Boston. And throughout my internship with Congressman Kennedy, I gained a deeper and more profound understanding of the community that Boston University calls home. During the day, I was getting a lesson in political science in the abstract, but each day in that Roxbury satellite office, I was seeing up close and personal the impact of policy. Policy that is well-intentioned but short-sighted. Policy that I would characterize as policy violence that is draconian and discriminatory. It was there that it was made clear to me that conditions don't just happen, they are legislated. And as a 19, 20-year-old, to have the full weight of a congressional office behind me, to be able to connect someone that was battling housing or food insecurity with the resources that they need, to get someone the unemployment benefits that they had been denied, or a veteran help them to access health care, a senior to navigate their social security benefits. My consciousness was stoked and my purpose made that much more clear. It was where I saw firsthand the impact of policy. The experience broadened my horizons beyond the bounds of BU's campus, and it is a lesson that has served me well throughout my life. Do not allow yourself to be confined by the walls around you. Go beyond what is comfortable and what is known. You will always find more understanding, more inspiration, more joy in community than you will apart from it. Now, as is so often the case, life gets in the way and derails our best laid plans. After several disruptive life events, a layoff and an illness, I can no longer remain at Boston University. It was no longer tenable. But I did maintain, while making, working three part-time jobs, my internship with Congressman Kennedy and was eventually hired as a full-time staff person in his office. In 2018, when I was elected to represent the Massachusetts 7th Congressional District in the United States Congress, it was indeed a full circle moment. Because you see, the seat I now hold in Congress as the first person of color and the first black woman ever to represent this Commonwealth in that house in its 230 year history, It was the very same seat, the same office that I began in as an unpaid intern 25 plus years ago. Boston changed my life. Boston University changed my life. The experiences I had at BU, both good and bad, shaped me in important, formidable ways just as I know that your experiences here have shaped you. 
what you have learned and experienced, the passions you have nurtured, the people you have come to know, the community you have built over the past several years have brought you all here collectively to this moment. And that deserves celebration. And as Arshel reminds us, this is one of the most diverse graduating classes in the history of Boston University. And that didn't just happen. It was with intention. In this stadium today, there are graduates from dozens of different states and even still more countries. Graduates who are the first in their families to attend college. Graduates who grew up in a single parent household or the foster system who are active duty military, who are immigrants. Graduates who have defied the naysayers who underestimated you, who counted you out. Graduates who underestimated your own power, who wondered and questioned if you would ever arrive at this moment, at this day, if you would sit in these chairs, walk across this stage, and in this past year, you have all weathered unprecedented challenge. COVID-19 has introduced brand new challenges while worsening existing hardship and inequity. It has strained our normal ties to one another, but at the same time, made clear the vital importance of community and simple pleasures and joys. And for too many, it has meant an empty seat at the dinner table or one less loved one to share in today's celebration. Now I imagine many of you may feel compelled and feel an urgent desire to move on as quickly as possible from this pandemic, to put the pain and the hardship behind you, to not look back, but not so fast. There is much to be said for pausing, for taking a breath, to think and to reflect. For some, this experience has provided greater clarity about what matters to you, about whom matters to you, what your purpose is, what you are called to contribute. Don't lose that. For others, the pandemic may have had a less profound but no less impactful impression on you. Now, I don't know about y'all, I'm an Aquarius, and uh, we like to make lists. I'm an exhaustive list maker. Every day I make lists of the things I want to accomplish, but there have been many days in my life, including as a student here at Boston University, where the only thing on my to-do list, the only task, was get up. Just getting out of bed some days was a victory. Each and every day for the past 16 months, you have all gotten up. My dear friend Joshua Du Bois refers to this as the gentle battle that we are confronted with each morning. You've been winning that gentle battle. And for everyone, as we now begin on the long road to recovery, the work of healing is a journey not only for each of you as individuals. Your reflection, your healing also helps to create space and to heal all those around you, the village that has carried you here, and the broader community of which you are a member. At the same time, we cannot romanticize and be content with a return to a pre-pandemic normal that was unjust and inequitable to begin with. Individually and together, we must learn the lessons of the pandemic and act accordingly. As we recover, as we begin our collective healing, we are all called to do our part. Among the many lessons my mother taught me is this one. There is a difference between your job and your work. Your job is what you do to pay the bills, and your work, with a capital W, is the work of justice seeking, of community upliftment and building. 
Now, when I look out at all of you, I see thousands of what I would characterize as values engineers, social architects, table shakers and trailblazers, ready to do the work with a capital W that my mother so often spoke of. Sixty years ago, one of my favorite authors, James Baldwin, was reflecting on the nature of majority and minority rights in America. It's a quote I've come back to often this commencement season, and one I think carries particular weight in this moment. In defining the majority, Baldwin writes, majorities have nothing to do with numbers or with power but with influence, moral influence. And this majority is you. No one else can do it. The world is before you, and you need not take it or leave it as it was when you came in. You need not take it or leave it as it was when you came in. Now, Baldwin was speaking at the height of what is traditionally thought of as the civil rights movement, the monumental struggle for racial, social, and economic justice in the 1950s and 60s. But make no mistake, that movement isn't confined to the past. It's still happening all around us every day. And the challenge Baldwin raises is just as urgent today as it was six decades ago. Baldwin was right. He is right. You need not take the world as it is, as you inherited it. In fact, you cannot. We need each and every one of you to meet this moment, to imagine a better world, and then to work for it. You are graduating into a country and a world grappling with challenges that are breathtaking in their scope, but at the same time, each of you embodies the potential for transformative change, person to person, community to community. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but recently there have been online images from the early chapters of the civil rights movement that have been colorized. When we see those same images in grainy, black and white, it's easy to consign them to a different era, long time ago. But when we see them in color, it imparts a recency, a reminder that it wasn't long ago, a fact it wasn't that long ago, and much work still remains to be done. And when I look at those images, I'm struck by how young everyone was. Now, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. may be one of this institution's most revered alums, but it was Coretta Scott King who said, freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. So now it is your turn. You are today's freedom riders. You are today's justice seekers. You are today's foot soldiers and organizers. It may be at a protest or a march, or it may be through the lens of a microscope or the inside of a boardroom. Whether you are a chemist or a computer engineer, a business person, an aspiring educator, a dancer, a nonprofit leader, a poet, a pastor, or any of the other dreams and ambitions represented here here today, there is a place in the movement for everyone, and the movement needs you. Over the past year, in addition to the trauma caused by the pandemic, our country has been rocked by a gut-wrenching moment or gut-wrenching moments that have shown the depth of racism, white supremacy, and profound injustices in our communities. But racial, social, and economic injustice are not present only in momentary spasms of violence and hatred. They are codified. They are systemic. And dismantling those systems, building a more just and equitable world, requires collective determination, collective action. As BU's own Dr. Kendi has challenged us, it takes a commitment to be anti-racist. It requires tackling problems that are small enough to solve and big enough to matter. It requires each of us to take a stakehold in our communities and to, as Baldwin 
tells us to exert moral influence and to refuse to accept the world as we have inherited it. Another world is possible where racial, social, economic, environmental, and healthcare injustice is the exception rather than the rule. Another world is possible where black and brown folks needn't put our very lives at risk to demand our humanity be seen, affirmed, and valued. Another world is possible where women are seen, their lived experiences respected, and their bodily autonomy protected. Another world is possible where LGBTQIA people do not have to struggle every day to safeguard their most basic rights and freedoms. Another world is possible where no one is burdened with tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt. And where everyone has the right and the ability to vote and where everyone who wants one has a good job that pays a living wage. Another world is possible. When I first ran for Congress, I said change can't wait. It still can't. So go now, beyond these walls, take what you have learned, take the village that you carry and the village that has carried you Take your lived experiences and build the world you want to see. The future belongs to all of us. In Boston University class of 2021, when I look out at all of you, I know that change is on the way. Congratulations, graduates. We shall now present the candidates for degrees. Mr. President. Provost Morrison. Mr. President, I have the honor to call for the presentation of the candidates for degrees as recommended by the faculty of Boston University's schools and colleges. And to all of the candidates for degrees, as your school or college and your degree are called, please rise and remain standing until all the schools and colleges have been called. Mr. President. Professor Preston. Mr. President, I have the tremendous honor to present the 2021 Arvind and Chanda Nanlal Kilachand Honors College Scholars. Mr. President, Dean Zlatova. I have the honor and the pleasure to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Science, the Bachelor of Liberal Studies, and the undergraduate certificates recommended by the Faculty of Metropolitan College. Mr. President. Dean Upneja. Mr. President, I have the honor to present candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science as recommended by the faculty of the School of Hospitality Administration. <laughs> President Brown. Dean Chard. Mr. President, it is my honor to present the candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science from the Wheelock, recommended by the faculty from the Wheelock College of Education and Human Development.
President Brown, Dean Najam, Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty of the Pardee School of Global Studies, I have the great honor and pride to present to you our wonderful candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degrees in Asian Studies, in European Studies, in Latin American Studies, in Middle East and African Studies, and in International Relations, as recommended by the faculty. President Brown. Dean Young. I have the honor to present the candidates uh, for the Bachelor of Arts degree, the Bachelor of Music degree, and the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree as recommended by the faculty of the College of Fine Arts. <laughs> President Brown. Dean Luchin. President Brown, I have the honor to, to present the sensational candidates for the degree of the Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, in Computer Engineering, in Mechanical Engineering, and Biomedical Engineering, as recommended by the faculty of the College of Engineering. Mr. President. Dean Moore. I have the honor to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree as recommended by the faculty of the College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences, Sargent College. Mr. President. Dean Di Cristiana. Mr. President, I have the great honor to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Science degrees as recommended by the faculty of the College of Communication. <laughs> President Brown. Dean Fournier. President Brown, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Science of Business Administration as recommended by the faculty of the Questrom School of Business. President Brown. Dean Sklarloff. President Brown, I have the honor to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree recommended by the faculty of the College of Arts and Sciences. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts given to the trustees of Boston University and entrusted by them to me, I hereby confer upon you the degrees that you have earned together with all the appropriate honors, privileges, and responsibilities in token of which you are granted diplomas. My congratulations to you all. Before you are seated, I would like to salute your parents. Your accomplishments are built on the support of your family. Although they cannot be with us in person today, they were with us in spirit. I ask you to acknowledge once again their role in you reaching your goal today. Seated. 
The commencement ceremony celebrates the achievements of each of our students, but it means much more. It celebrates the accomplishments of a great academic community, a community where you have studied and worked together in classrooms, laboratories, and studios. It celebrates not only your accomplishments, but also the efforts of the faculty and staff whose dedication has helped lead you to this marvelous day. On your shoulders rest the enormous responsibilities for guiding America and the world and for addressing the very substantial challenges we face. You are the future of this university, for this country, and for humanity. Among the graduates today are those who are commissioning into the armed forces of the United States. You have chosen to dedicate yourselves to the protection of this country. This university is proud of you and gives to you our sincerest thanks. Wherever your tours of duty may take you, Godspeed. <laughs> to all of the class of 2021, as you leave Nickerson Field, you join a long line of Boston University graduates stretching over time to include some 346,000 living alumni of this great institution. Your accomplishments will be part of the fabric of our legacy. Your Boston University education has prepared you well. Go into the world and make it a better place for all of us. Again, congratulations and good luck to you all. Will all faculty members and graduates rise as Ms. Jillian Nagana sings Claritima? The Reverend Dr. Robert Allen Hill will now deliver the benediction. Following the benediction, the 148th commencement of Boston University will conclude. We ask that graduates remain at their places for a special presentation. Following the presentation, please remain in place until the platform party and faculty have left the field. Thank you. We began with a psalm, we end with a poem. We began 3,000 years ago, we end 100 years ago. We began with David and we end with Frost, your New England poet. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, though having perhaps a better claim, for it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the parting there had warned them both about the same. And both that morning equally lay and leaves no step had trod and black. I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever get back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference, and we pray. O thou in whose truth we are set free, O thou in whose freedom we have the graces to choose and decide, give and take, O thou whose Gifts to us include the capacity to dream and to edit our dreams. 
to write our stories and to rewrite them as well. Grant us thy peace. Grant us thy peace. Grant this class of 2021 thy lasting peace. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.